Ah, Kobe minifigures. The military knockoffs of the century. Truly the stuff of nightmares. Luckily, there's actually good Lego customs out there. There's pretty much a soldier for every front and faction of the war made by some company. And of course, there was that one year Lego was feeling particularly zesty and made their own German Africa Corps soldiers. Trust me. These guys did war crimes too. Lego's breaking their own rules. But that's for a different video. Today, we're gonna be diving into some of the greatest World War II accessories that you need to have for Lego. This stuff varies greatly and will be differing from the last illegal Lego video we did. All new stuff, all new items, and a big giveaway for you guys, so stay tuned until the end to enter in to win. If you haven't checked the previous descriptions of the giveaways, please be sure to do so. There's a lot of unclaimed prizes out there. And shout out to the last giveaway winner who actually won the Kobe Lego stuff as well as some of the Germans featured in this video today. I'm just using them real quick for this video and then they will be shipped out to him right away. Let's get into it, boys. So the Lego company just sent forward a little military police here in order to sanction our illegal Lego items. Of course, in doing so, this is an illegal Lego item themselves. Just kidding, this is from Battle Brick. Obviously, Lego only makes German Africa Corps soldiers. This dude kinda freaking sick though. He got that M1 carbine, he got the baton nightstick, he got the handcuffs, and not to mention an M1911 in case things get real spicy. He's ready to take out any illegal Lego doers. But you know, first, before he can go take out any illegal Lego doers, sometimes you need to do a little target practice. Yeah, bro, nowadays with these items, you can make it entire freaking gun ranges. Of course a nightstick, probably not the best weapon to utilize against a plastic target. Why don't we upgrade him with some new weapons? You can always go with the tried and true Springfield rifle right here. Unequip the scope, slap on a bayonet, and you could do some serious trench charges with this custom painted Springfield rifle right here. Or even snag one of the enemy's weapons, a Giver and load some clips up into that. These are all custom printed weapons. Some of them are from Brick Forge, which have a bit more of a brutalism look to them, versus, of course, the Brick Arms weapons, which we have right here, that was painted on with silver to give the bolt, as well as the bayonet, some extra flair. I think, personally, I'm still a fan of the Brick Arms weapons, but the Brick Forge weapons, they are pretty cool looking. But you can't have weapons without having some equipment, baby. You can go ahead and equip a nice little guitar, play some tunes during downtime in the battlefield, or use it to smash some zombie brains in. Or if you like a little bit more classical music, you go ahead and get the violin. But by far, one of my all-time favorite things that you can do now with World War II LEGO minifigures is purchase the Brick Forge accessories. So. A lot of these are actually really insane because they all work in tandem with each other. So you've got yourself this little chest harness, right? You slap it on your boy and he looking spiffy as all hell. But then there's all these little notches on the vest that you can utilize. So you go ahead and you take one of your little satchels here and this actually just clips right on. Bada bing. Now he's got ammo pouches on the front. There's also notches on the back and a big button on the back. You can go ahead, toss yourself a little backpack on the back of this chest piece. And boom, uh, it's upside down. And boom, now he's ready with all of the supplies that he needs for war. We've also got these sleeping bag kits, which are often found on German uniforms during the war. You can just go ahead and slide that right underneath it. Or say this backpack is a little bit too large for your tasting, go ahead and slap on a smaller pouch instead. Oh, this does not fit with the tent. There you go. A little smaller pouchy pouch. The vests do come in a variety of colors, so this actually makes it pretty easy to make your own military soldiers without having to have custom pad printed military soldiers. A fella of this quality pad printing on top of him probably run you 15 to 20 dollars depending on the website. However, you don't need that pad printing necessarily. You can go ahead and find yourself a dude with a color scheme that you like. This time I went with an old school knight figure. Then you go ahead and slap on a bunch of these different utility items right there. And of course you gotta pick out a helmet for the boy. So we do have some Vermact helmets here with custom printing on them. Look absolutely beautiful. We got two of those fellas right there. Why don't we go ahead and slap one onto this fella right here. You got yourself even bayonets that can be attached 
to these little hooks, slap a rifle in his hand, and boom, you got yourself a minifigure who's actually ready for war that isn't medieval. Of course, I'd probably change out the legs if I was doing this for a mock or something like that because those really don't really fit the figure, but you could basically just color match any figures you want and get yourself a military soldier out of this. I also didn't coordinate the pouches. I opted to get a variety of different colored pouches, Get the same monochromatic pouches and he will look a lot more like a military soldier. In fact, this guy looks a bit more like a zombie hunter than an actual military soldier. But hey, we do have ourselves oodles more accessories. We've of course got ourselves a little ammo box that you can carry around. You've got a medical backpack you can go ahead and equip. A parachute backpack too for any airborne soldiers in your army. A variety of different helmets including a green Wehrmacht helmet for that Little forest camouflage. Got a drill sergeant hat here too. A Volkstrom cap. And you can go ahead and equip your guys with a little captain's hat here for when they're on leave back home, boys. Or if they're feeling cute, give them the little Girl Scout beret. There's honestly even more stuff you can equip these guys with to make them fit in. This little side pouch right here acts the same as that vest, except this time the clip is right on his side. You can go ahead and equip one of these pistol holsters to it and slide an M1911 in that puppy. Bada bing, your guy now has a sidearm. But let's say sidearms aren't really your style, why don't you go ahead and rip his head off. And then we've got multiple of these different bandoliers you can use on him. This green one right here is eh, likely best used with the Pacific Front, but uh, we'll use it on this military police soldier right here. And they've got these nifty flexible packs on the back, so basically you can slide in just about anything. Night sticks easily fit in there. Hell, you want yourself an entire gun? Well, that doesn't really fit. Yeah, does this one? <laughs> Not really. Okay, I'm sure there are some guns that you could fit in there, but maybe bayonets and night sticks are the best choices. Swords do fit in there really, really nicely though. And of course, there is another pouch on the front right there. There's also that same flexible product in belt form, but it also does have a little button on the back. So if you want your guy to have a little butthole parachute, he can. And the last sort of variant of this is going to be another one of these sashes. You can go ahead and fit it over him. You do have to disassemble the arm for this puppy. Again, it's got another one of those buttons on the side holster hip, but it's also got a little button on the chest. You could fit it over the other way. I probably should have done that, but it's the same idea. You just go ahead and, and equip whatever you like to the front. That's actually a flamethrower backpack, and here is the flamethrower attachment for it. I wouldn't recommend holding the gasoline straight on your front. Probably not the best call. It's okay. You have your little canteen with you to pour out the fire because gas fires are often very easy to extinguish. Ask any firefighter. Don't, don't actually. Gas fires, grease fires, those, those are pretty dangerous. <laughs> Be careful out there, guys. So we got all this equipment for our minifigure army. And of course, I went ahead and got us some propaganda posters to put up around to hire some recruits. Now we just need to put those recruits together. And to help us do that, we have these beautiful accessory packs. We have an Africa Corps pack, a combat medic pack, and a flame trooper pack. Basically you can change any old minifigure into any of these things if you have one of these packs. So let's change some of these military figures into their respective classes. All right, so first off, here is our Africa Corps trooper. Went ahead and equipped his sleeping bag as well as his ammo pouches onto his backpack right there. Could have put, actually, a parachute onto him, but decided not to. It's cool that they let you mix and match. They also gave you a nice little, like, off-duty officer's cap as well as the standard cap right there for the Africa Corps. And then they give you an STG-44, no attachments, and a grenade which you can actually strap onto the utility pack. Again, something LEGO will never do is these war accessories and things like that. And, uh, you know, to them, it's illegal. They, uh, they don't ever want to see this kind of stuff in LEGO. And yet, they're kind of hypocritical by putting different stuff in there, but we've talked about that before. Uh, so, you know, it's cool to see this being available, and it's also funny that we're using an official LEGO Africa Corps Trooper, something that they speak out against <laughs> in this, so. All right, we got our combat medic here, and uh, once again, they gave us an abundance of things. We got a scalpel and a syringe that I just couldn't fit in, and even the little medic pouch has a 
has an area you could put stuff, so I put some little scissors in there, it's so cute. And of course, he's got his M1911, his canteen. He is kitted out, man. And I also bought separately this little beat up looking dude. I really like this, so like, you know, you got your standard feller, and then you go ahead and rip his head off. Um, and that, that might have been a little violent, but that's okay. Then you just put the injured head on, you replace the cap, and boom, you got him someone you can work with. <laughs> it's good for Mox, man. It's really good for Mox. Or maybe he executes him. And there we have possibly one of the most terrifying figures. The Pioneer Flamethrower figure. Whew! Looks like a character out of Mouse. Absolutely terrifying. They also come with a Giver here. Oh, and actually, I missed this. Oh, this is the uh, air filter to his gas mask. That's cool. That's like, actually take off a bowl. <laughs> oh, he looks even better now. Look at that. Very nice. Now, I also went ahead and purchased uh, a few of these vests, too. Uh, these are just standard crew vests, and basically, you could just cover up Lego markings and stuff like that. So you could take a tan figure, put these on him. He could be a doctor, he could be a lawyer, something like that. You put these on top of him, and all of a sudden, he's a soldier because you can't really see what's underneath them, which is perfect. Also, bought some extra helmets, you know, these pot helmets and things like that, to also include. These are very, very helpful in helping you make products that uh, you know Lego just doesn't want to use uh, for themselves so you could go ahead and purchase these online and it works out so now we got all these troopas but we need some obstacles and other equipment for them to utilize on the battlefield and luckily we have plenty to do that with first off we, oh, first off we have these uh, medical crates as well as vermac crates these are pretty nice because you could just go ahead and store different weapons in here lock them up for later uh, and it just looks really cool really cool way to store your legos obviously good for mocks as well uh, but you know just keeping all these little custom pieces together in one little handy buckety place like this is uh, pretty cool pretty cool stuff so that is the first way to create some obstacles and and equipment for them to utilize and of course it fits on Lego studs, just like that. Next up, we have a brown, smaller version of the Vermac crate, and actually, all of these crates, I just noticed, have these little teeny studs that we've been using all day today to attach equipment and stuff like that, so you can actually put shovels, ammo pouches, stuff like that in there. This crate comes with a nice little bazooka-style thing. I'm actually not sure exactly what weapon this is, but it's pretty cool. Then uh, you've also got the uh, FG-42, I think, and oh! It comes with equipable ammo magazine in the side and scope. Yeah, we're getting customizable like Call of Duty here. And finally, we have ourselves a submachine gun too. We can toss all of these into this crate. Actually, that, that doesn't fit. That's why you can take apart the barrel of that and equip it in multiple different places. Pretty handy dandy. Whew, I don't actually know if all of these will fit in here though. Let's, uh, eh, eh. Eh, yeah, we could probably cram it in there. And finally, we got these brown stick pieces to go ahead and make hedgehog tank traps. Let's go ahead and build a couple of those out of these. Oh, baby, these look so freaking good, man. I mean, look at this. You got your tank, and it's like, ooh, can't go anywhere. Okay, they're not stapled down, so it can, bear, it can, it can go places. But still, the idea is that it just gets lodged somewhere, and then the more pressure that you apply, the more the ends get wedged into the earth and these hold you back and they're just solid steel so it's really hard to get around them they jam up the gears they can detract really really effective design just from world war ii and to have them in such a cool accurate format like this in lego ah oh, is just really really neat i mean there are some pretty cool lego mocks of this using authentic lego but it's nice to see a fully fleshed out plastic version of this totally meant to just be tank traps so that's nice that would look so good on a d-day mock on a beach invasion anything like that that would look really sick i broke part of the tank whoops all right guys that's gonna be about it for this video however i can't remember if we did a giveaway or not for this so let's figure out something to give away all right we're gonna give away these three custom minifigures because I bought extras of all of the supplies that they come with so 
Well, I can make my own, so why not give these to you folks? If you guys want to join the giveaway, all you got to do is hit the like button, subscribe with notifications on, and comment down below your favorite battle of World War II, and you will be entered on in to win. Like I said, I can't remember if I already planned a giveaway for this video, so if I haven't, this will be the giveaway. And if I have, let's just give away both. Why not? By the way, shout out to the newest channel members, Deadpool fan, as well as Nikansawi? I'm so sorry if I mispronounced that. Either way, your names have been added to a piece of history. If you guys want to become channel members, get an extra entry into every giveaway, as well as get your name shouted out via this beautiful box here and some other benefits. All you got to do is click that join button next to the channel. I appreciate all you channel members. It helps me make these awesome videos. Thank you guys for just watching in general as well. Be sure to hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you on the next video. Peace. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Be sure to click that subscribe button for more content and hit the notification bell if you'd like to be alerted to whenever I live stream or upload. Thanks so much.